So our agenda, we're going to do some speaking drills, and then we're going to, we'll only do two for today, because um, like I mentioned, I want you guys to have enough time to prepare. And the, turn, the topic is the same topic we have had on here. We don't change the topics um, until the next year. So it's still police brutality and body cams, and that will be the same topic for the entire year. Um, so that's what we're debating on Saturday. I just looked up in the chat. Um, so we're gonna do speaking drills, go into cross-ex, so you guys kind of understand how that kind of works. We're gonna briefly touch on rebuttals, and that'll also connect to the impact activist tournament that we had last week, and week before that. Then we're gonna do a little bit of tournament prep. I'm gonna teach you guys how to deal with judges because some judges are like not the best. You need to learn how to adjust your argument based on who is judging you because that'll definitely help you win more rounds. And then we're gonna go break into breakout rooms with our debate partners so you guys can get a little chance in case you haven't done that in your team practices to kind of meet them, talk to them a little bit more, make sure you guys are ready for Saturday, and then just do a Q&A closing. All right, so we're only gonna do two of these drills today. We'll just do forwards and one breath so we can just get into prep. So um, everybody get out something to read. So it can be the evidence packet. You can just pull it up in a separate tab. It can be a book that you're reading for class. As a textbook, literally anything. So I'll give you guys just one minute to grab something to read. And then I just have a little plug something as well. Um, yeah, I'll be right back. All right, cool, cool, cool. So can I just get a thumbs up when you guys have something to read? Um, and if anybody needs more time, please let me know. So can I just give a thumbs up when you're ready? I can do. Okay, good. Okay, I'm, I'm just missing a few more people. So I'll give you guys like 30 more seconds and then we'll. I'm going to batch speaking drills. Favorite time of the practice. All right, cool. So I'm just going to um, talk about how it works. And then if anybody needs more time, just feel free to stop me. Um, so this one is called Fours. It's just getting your like vocal cords warmed up, a little bit of practice, to build your endurance, your speed, enunciation, all that. So this drill is just to act as if you were presenting in a debate round. So it's like, if you were being judged on the speech, how would you speak? How would you enunciate your words? How fast would you talk? All that. So it's just you're reading as if you're in a debate round. You start at the top of your page and just keep reading through. Are there any questions? All right, cool. So uh, remember, we are standing up because that, you will be standing up during the tournament. It also makes it easier for you to project your voice when you stand up because your diaphragm isn't like constricted. So if you can stand up, also if you are unable to participate in these speaking drills for whatever reason, totally fine. Don't stress out about it. Just um, whenever you have the ability to do so, just get some practice in. All right, so stand up. Also, don't forget to unmute yourselves when you can, um, just so like <laughs> you don't feel like you're alone in these speaking drills because it can be a little awkward. Um, so we're just going to be reading forward. I'll set a timer for two minutes. Any questions before we start? Okay, ready and go. Video evidence doesn't lead to conviction for police to make claims that they have been in the city. Here, the late Mr. Shakes has said and told me what one of these things and at 9 32 p.m. today, which is 10 minutes ago, and also the other day, 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 and Sir, I consider myself one of your guys. I see our Prime Minister and his distinguished sidekicks on the board of Black Hours and Ragida and Jean Namaste's ready to part of the team at your room. I will tell you about how you are going to be in the game. Now, you are presenting us a smoke of you. You are going to be in the game. 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 You are going to be
guidelines of hygiene, discipline, and courtesy for our program to allow the Especially in the field of technology, the recovery of the We have all these outsourcing companies that work for our members. How to learn how to make a few of our members. Perfect. Thank you. So, and I'll actually put the timer up there also, so it'll be a little easier so we can keep track of like how long we've been talking for. That was totally great. Thank you guys all for doing that. The second one we are going to be doing was, I think it was backwards, if I recall correctly. Um, I don't remember, but we're just going to do backwards anyway because I don't have it pulled up. So, and I'll reset the timer, so let me do that. You guys will have two minutes, and for those of you who are not familiar with the backwards, oh no, it's actually one. Okay, I'm glad because I, I don't think we've done that. So we're just going to take one breath, and once you're out of breath, you stop talking, and then we just keep going until we can see who's like been doing it longer. I think we have done this before, but it's totally fine. So when I say go, everybody's going to take a deep breath and then they're going to read for as long as they can and they're just going to keep reading until they're out of breath once you're out of breath you stop talking and then we'll just start again does that make sense yeah we're reading backwards right all right cool we're reading backwards oh no right? we're not reading back no oh okay. no, we're not doing backwards we're doing um no we're just we're doing one breath so um this one you just read forward but you're doing it on only one breath. So you take a deep breath in, read for as long as you can. Once you're out of breath, you stop reading, and then we just start all over. Okay. And the reason why we do this one for a long period of time, sometimes you can get out of breath really easily, or you like you forget kind of how to time your breaths. And then when you don't time how many breaths you take in like a speech, you tend to like do a, sh a sharp breath or a sharp in and that sounds a little weird and can be a little off-putting to judges. So this is all about your speaker performance and how to build that up. So this is why we do that job. All right, so um, everybody unmute yourselves so we can keep track of who actually wins the one breath thing. And there's no like stay out of breath, just stop talking. Um, so we can, you know, kind of see who. It's longer. Okay, <laughs> so um, everybody, everybody ready? All right, I'll take that as a yes. Um, make sure you have your thing ready. So, and also stand up if you can, because um, you will be standing for your debate round. This helps your performance, helps you protect your voice. Um, okay, so everybody take a deep breath and go. That's when I had to say that thing in English or out loud. That was that. We're gonna do that again. That was like mostly just a practice round, so you guys can kind of see. Um, so everybody, unmute yourselves and take a deep breath and go. A lot of us are going to go to the um thank you all for in this drill a full eight minutes of speaking drills which is like the length of a speech but you know this is um on your own time whenever you have like a quiet space or a quiet area totally free 
feel free to do any of these drills or even just practice your speech so you can really just build up your endurance so you're not super winded after an eight minute speech and also to work on your enunciation so you can really get those speaker points up. All right, um, we are going to be going into a little brief overview of what CrossX is. And we're gonna do a little activity to go along with that and then we'll move on to rebuttals. Um, Brooke, would you like to lead the rebuttals or the CrossX portion? I'll do rebuttals. Great. Um, so I will go over CrossX. So as you guys know, within a debate, we have these cross-examination periods, which are three minutes long, and everybody will be giving out a CrossX. For novice, CrossX are tag team type of like thing, which means that you can both, you and your partner can both ask questions during a CrossX period. Um, doesn't really happen that much as you move up divisions, like you get to varsity and JV. But for novice, it's totally fine. So if you don't have questions, feel free to rely on your partner to kind of help you, um, like fill up the three minute time span. But some pointers to think about CrossX is to create a strategy. So I kind of see CrossX as, you can use it two ways. One way is that you can use it to clarify any points that don't make sense to you during a debate round. So if you're unsure of what your partners are saying, you're unsure about a certain statistic, or you're unsure how this actually solves the problem, you can ask that to them during CrossX. You can be like, can you elaborate on your, like, Andrew 16 card when it said that police violence actually decreased in 2017? Like, you can ask some questions kind of like that to kind of clarify, like, what you didn't understand. And that's only if you are really just, like, don't have any questions right now and you need to fill up for three minutes. And, like, a preferred way to use CrossX is to strategize it. And the way you do this is that you try to create a trap that you want the other team to fall into. So if I want my opponent to start their, um, their, so let's see. But I was talking about like strategizing the process and how to use it in a more strategic sense. So did you guys get the example with the ice caps melting? Did you guys get through that part? Yeah. Okay, cool. So yeah, so that's pretty much um, it. So like, for example, if I want my opponents to agree with me that the ice caps are going to melt in 2071, then I'll start creating a string of like kind of leading questions to get them to agree with that. And be like, you mentioned in your previous speech that the ice caps are rapidly melting, right? Yeah, it'd be any ice caps around by like, say 2071. And your opponents are going to be like, yeah. And then you're going to take that yes that they said, agreeing to that point, and you're going to bring that into your rebuttal and be like, judge in cross X, my opponent conceded, or they agreed with me, that the ice caps are going to melt by 2071, which means that you should prefer our evidence or you should vote for us because we're the only ones solving for the climate change, which then protects the ice caps. Does that make sense? Did I cut out again? Nope. Um, does everybody understand that though? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. You're basically just finding, so if I could just add in a little bit, um, I think that yeah, CrossX is awesome for taking the time out to decide, like what Sakai was saying, to create a strategy. Um, so if we can build on that example that Sakai was talking about of like, maybe your opponent says uh, the ice caps will melt and by 2071 um that could be useful because you could say you can have some other thing that you might be reading that uh suggests that your impact will happen before then so you can say yeah the ice caps melting in 2071 that's bad but babies dying this year that's worse <laughs> because one of these things is happening um before the other and we should deal with this before that other thing so cross-sex gives you the opportunity to decide how to use your opponent's evidence or arguments creatively for you. But in cross-sex, you wouldn't want them, get your butt down. That's my dog, sorry guys. Um, in cross-sex, you wouldn't want them to know what your full strategy is. You might want to try to make it clear to the judge um, what you're going for. So you might ask questions that you think that the judge might understand. You might do body language or different gestures to try to communicate something to the judge. 
But sometimes, in most of the time, your goal is not to let your opponent know exactly what your strategy is. And the reason why that might be the case is that it gives them the opportunity to prepare arguments against your strategy. So cross sex is like a is a is a you know it's a sneaky time. You know you're trying to you're trying to do a couple of different things. You're trying to create a strategy. You're trying to get clarification about whatever you need to get clarification for. And that could be what does this word mean? Or what's the condition of the counter plan? Or um, you know are like it, just things like that things that you would need to know to be able to make sure that you have the the best understanding of your opponent's arguments when you need it i think it's also a time for you to just to really show your personality um some of my favorite people who i've seen in cross sex are often really funny but respectful it's time to show yourself um you can build your speaker points in this time because if you didn't know, speaker points aren't just based off of how you perform in your uh, individual constructive speeches. It's based off of how you perform throughout the entirety of the debate. And cross sex is another one of those times where you have the opportunity to highlight uh, yourself and be better known by both your opponents, your partner, and the judge. Does anybody have questions about cross sex maybe? Has anybody ever felt like they've been in a in a cross sex where they've uh, don't really have a bunch of questions? Yeah. Yeah. What are what are some strategies that you do to try to to create questions when you feel like you don't have a lot of them? I think I would just ask them to like how Miss Bardell said. Like I would. Just ask them to elaborate on some certain things if I don't have certain questions. Yeah, and, and JN said, just start asking why, <laughs> which is fair. Um, one of my favorite strategies when I got started in debate was to remember what, when, where, why, and how. The basic things that we learn in English class or, or history where, you know, you, you want to be able to identify some things. So ask, so I would look at their evidence and ask yourself how you can form a what question, how you can form a how question, how you can form a who question. Um, for example, if they're, if let, let's, let's imagine if we were debating against the body cams affirmative. And somebody's in there and they are they're affirmative, we're negative, and they say, Hey, you know, this is a card that says, uh, if police don't wear body cameras, then the amount of police brutality is going to continue to increase by 30% by in, in the next three years. And so I would say, hmm, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm next. I have to ask some questions in cross sex. I'm, I'm trying to write down, you know, I've got my notebook ready. I got my pen. I'm ready to start trying to make some questions. Okay, so what do I know about this? You said that we need these body cameras to cut down police brutality because if we don't, it'll increase by 30%. I want to say, hmm, how? Let me make a how question. I want to make a how question. How do you know that body cameras will result in a decrease in police violence just by being there? Why would police? And then maybe you ask a follow up question because sometimes it helps to form one question. So remember, I just made that one question based off of that saying, okay, how do you know that police violence or police brutality will actually decrease just by body cameras alone and then off that question another question came to my mind of like yeah so how, how would that decrease how would that decrease by like violence alone uh, why wouldn't police still continue to do what they do on cameras you know something like that um but that's just an example you don't have to hold to do all of those every single time because sometimes you may have specific questions because sometimes stuff just doesn't add up. Sometimes you look at someone's tag and then you look at the actual card and you recognize that tag doesn't have anything to do with what that card is saying. 
and that's a that's a worthwhile thing to talk about in cross sex it's it's a cross sex is also a time to be like so you in, in your tag you said that voting for or doing the plan means that uh there will be community gardens that start to form between police and and, and the community and when i looked into the warrants of your car this car was about um you know not that <laughs> not creating community gardens with police in the in the broader community and so you would want to point those things out when there is big contradictions or even small contradictions or medium contradictions medium contradictions when you see things that don't make sense cross six is a is a point where you might also want to tease that out as well because that gives the judge the opportunity to have some skepticism about how strong or valid their arguments are. Because then they're like, that doesn't make sense. Why would you say that uh, police would have, there would be community gardens that would emerge between the community and um, police when that's not what your, what your author said? Now I wanna look at all your evidence. Are any of your arguments real? Are any, is anything you're saying valid, you know? Wait, I thought you just had to say Miller 19 for your tag. Ruby, can you explain your question? Um, so you said for your tag, it sounded like you had to like read out the title of the stuff, but we've, or at least for like my group, we've only been reading out like Miller 19 or like Aaron 17, something like that. So that part is that is part of a card, but that's not the tag. And it might be worthwhile for us to kind of break down how to understand the parts of evidence. But there's a tag, there's your author's last name, which would probably be that Miller that you're seeing. And then you put the date of the publication of the article. Um, yeah. And after that, the bottom body of the of the card, which is typically the article or um, essay or whatever it is that you're using is the rest of it. Does that, does that help? Yeah. Um, so we only um, have to read Miller 19. We don't have to read the tag. You do need to read the tag. You do need to read the tag. Are you, I think um, if I got this correctly, Ruby, you're referring to when you are in process and you're referring to a certain card? Or are you referring to when you're in a speech and you're reading a card? Like in a speech. No, in a speech you read the tagline as well. Um, which school are you from again? Sorry, Ruby. Tech, open tech. Okay, cool. Um, we'll go over this again in small teams as well, but we need to move on. So we'll address that um, towards the end because we need time for prep time. Anything else you'd like to add for class? Um, if you have any more questions about, because we need to get through the rest of this material, like Sakai said, if you have follow-up questions, definitely feel free to email us. Because we'll be on standby. We're trying to make sure that everybody's super pumped and excited and ready for the tournament. So if you if you have some residual questions that we might not be able to get through today because we got to get through this material, just type it up and shoot, um, I, I would create a Word document if you have multiple or you think you might have multiple questions by the end of today. Um, and then send that out uh, to me and Sakai and we'll get back to you. All right, um, we'll move on. But um, just like little last minute things to add for cross X. One, be respectful. Cross X can get heated sometimes. So just remember to keep your composure. It'll look good for you more than your opponents. If you like your opponents are like angry at you or like a little sassy or snappy and you're like calm and composed and like still like answering these questions like in an even tone. So just remember to be respectful, don't lose your temper. It can get a little heated sometimes. Just remember to, you know, take a minute, take a deep breath, answer the questions to the best of your abilities. And also um, for the people responding to CrossFit, waste their time. If they give you an open-ended question on how your plan solves, give them a full layout of this of the summary of how your plan like fixes all the problems that you stated for because then that looks good on your part because you're responding, it shows you one, that you not only know your plan, but also that your plan actually does solve and you're able to articulate that to the judge. So if you're answering them, remember to answer them like respectfully and also waste their time if you can. Um, if you're asking them, 
don't be afraid to respectfully cut them off. So if they start to ramble, be like, I'm sorry, this is my cross sex. I'm asking, can you just answer this question with a yes or no? Or I'm sorry, this is my cross sex and we're moving on. So just, those are just some tips to like, remember as you're doing it. Um, but we would definitely move on with the activity later when we do more process practice. Practice, sorry. Right. But I want you guys to have enough time to like prepare for this tournament. Okay. So we're gonna bring. Sorry. Did you I have, have a question. question. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know when, but like today in the meeting, can we go over? I'm just really confused on like the whole tab room thing, on like how I'm supposed to get into my tournament. And I heard something going to tab room and then it takes you to a Zoom. So I'm like really confused about that. Can we go over that in like some part in the of the meeting, like today, the practice? I mean, yeah, totally. I have it. Um, carved, we have time carved in for tap room, so don't worry about it. We have it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, also, if anyone else has anything else that they want to like talk about, feel free to ask. Um, let's go into rebuttals really quick. Um, like you said, you want to talk about rebuttal. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> My dog is doing a real lot right now. And so I've been trying to like entertain him and be present. All right. Rebuttals. What is they? Rebuttals are the speeches that are basically a continuation of your constructive speeches in a shorter format. So you know how you give a 1AC and you're, it's that's preset and it's ready to go. At, after you get that, if you're the person who performs that speech, you are also going to give the 1AR. Um, outside of like, you know, like these speeches are basically, you are still continuing the arguments that you made in your constructive speeches, those eight minute speeches. However, you're doing it in five minutes. Um, and you're, a lot of what you're doing is trying to, to focus on framing your ballot the framing the ballot for the judge. And what I mean by framing the ballot for the judge is explaining to them why you have done the better debating over the other team, right? Like when you get started, a lot of it, like outside after the one, like the only speech that is its own is the one AC. Every speech after that is somewhat reactive, right? Because a one and C has to directly respond to the one AC. And then the two AC has to respond to the to the one NC. But what kind of continues on is the idea that we hold to the arguments that are considered offense. Um, so for the affirmative, your offense is case. For the negative, your, your offense will be off case. So off case can consist of your case, your dissats, your counter plans, you know, those arguments, um, those are your, your offense. And you want to make sure that you, regardless of anything else, have your, your offensive arguments in your rebuttal speeches, because these are the things that are going to persuade the judge to either vote for you or to vote for the other team. You need to stop dog. <laughs> um, stop really he's very spoiled <laughs> um are going to persuade the judge to vote for you or the other team uh and after you've made sure that you've included your offensive arguments and i would recommend personally that you always put your offense at the top of your speech stop that you always put your offense at the top of your speech after you do that you're going to want to do that kind of like responding like we talked to like you know as i was saying earlier each speech is kind of responding to the speech that was in front of it the only speech that is not responding to another speech is the first speech that's given which is the one ac every speech after that is responding and so you want to have your offense first and then you want to respond to the things that were in the speech prior to yours how long is a rebuttal? A rebuttal is five minutes, five of them. Um, as with any speech, you don't have to use all of your speech time, but especially with your rebuttals, it is strongly encouraged that you attempt to use all of your time. This is just because there's always another reason to try to explain to the judge why they should vote for you. Uh, what is it about your arguments that are more correct 
than what your opponent is saying? Have you made sure that you have uh, effectively dismissed all of their counter arguments? You know, all those kind of things are, you know, it's easy to kind of forget once we've like made sometimes read something that maybe we wrote out really quickly or we have pre-prepared to be able to read in our rebuttal speeches. But it's important that like if you have more time, you think of where your argument where you've only been able to deal with your opponent's arguments lightly and see where you can fill that time. Maybe you have 30 seconds left. 30 seconds goes a long way in debate. Uh, it may seem like not, you know, it's not that much, right? 30 seconds, what could I say? Judge vote for us? No, uh, especially depending on how fast of a speaker you are. Because you can get, uh, you can get like a small paragraph in possibly to explain to a judge why your arguments are stronger than your opponent's arguments in 30 seconds. Um, lastly, what to include in a rebuttal? We kind of talked about this in the other two questions, but I'll try to, uh, explain it as clearly as possible. Number one, you need offense, offense, offense. If you are affirmative, your offense is your case. So what this would look like to include in your speech is an explanation of why the plan solves what it is that you're doing that resolves the problem that the 1AC has described. You know, and so your opponents will likely have arguments as why you as to why you do not solve the problem that you're attempting to solve a part of defending your offense. Bye, Kennedy. Thanks so much. Have fun at volleyball practice. Be safe. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Um, but yeah, uh, make sure making sure that you are responding to the arguments that they're saying effectively. To answer the question that just came up in the chat, how do you know if you're ab for your neck? You will be both um, at different points of the tournament. You will have time to be ab, you will have time to be neck, um, but you will see your pairings once the tournament actually gets started um, because you won't know what side you are like until pairings are produced. So the first round will be likely preset as in like, uh, it, it, it will be made by us, like we will determine who will debate the first round. And based off of that, it's kind of staggered. All right. All right, cool. Any last questions about a rebuttal? All right, cool. Sorry, we're very pressed for time. So I'm just gonna make sure you get through another time to go over like all this prep stuff and we've got to go through tab everything um okay so really quick i'm just going to go over like the type of judges you'll encounter within bottle and how to kind of like adjust your arguments accordingly because um some people like or you would think that your certain type of style of argument would work with all like every single type of judge but actually like we have like a different step i'll explain it as we go on so maybe it'll get a little confusing okay anyway so there are three type of judges that you encounter at least within bottle so you have a lay judge a flay judge and a pro judge or splash like an ideal type of judge so a lay judge is a bottle volunteer that doesn't know anything about the debate topic or about really debate in general so you most likely get these type of judges in knowledge so this is really important for you guys to kind of like understand and look out for because these are the type of judges that you are most likely going to encounter during your novice career. So um, a flay judge is usually a parent volunteer because the judges we get are usually volunteers. So like parents, um, alumni, former debaters, like attorneys. So it like the skill level of debate kind of varies and you have to like watch out for that. So a flay judge is usually a parent volunteer who um, has some, some kids in bottle and they want to like help out a little bit more. So this type of judge doesn't understand kind of like the debate lingo or kind of how like certain arguments like works or how the point system works and stuff like that. So when you, when you encounter this type of judge, you usually speak slower because they're not used to judging rounds that like move speaking really fast because they're not used to that because they don't um, really know how like the debate sphere kind of works in that sense and like the advantages of speaking fast. So you would talk slower. You would spend some more time explaining your arguments 
to like really lay it out to the judge because the judge that's been like either debating for a while or like has been judging like this whole year they already know the topic so you don't really have to spend a lot of time like explaining like how like body cam solve the problems as much or like really go into the idea of, like police brutality or structural violence or like all these like complex type of terms but if you get a lay judge you do so if you have a lay judge you spend a little bit more time explaining your arguments you talk a little slower because they're not used to like the debate sphere so it's like as if you're explaining your arguments to your parents that's kind of how you would approach lay judge so if you were if your parents were judging your debate round how would you explain that to them that's kind of what you would expect with lay judge I mean, sorry, a lay judge. And then a lay judge is someone who's debated before, um, like they debated for like 10 years ago, hasn't really debated that much, but like they understand the general, like they have a general foundation of debate, but they like either have been out of touch within a while or like they have no knowledge of the topic or they just don't like it when people speak fast. That's a lay judge. And the way you would approach this is like, you would do kind of the same things with a lay judge where you wouldn't speak as fast but you wouldn't spend as much time like laying out arguments or simplifying your arguments as much because they understand the debate lingo, the debate jargon. So like if you use certain terms like offense or like defense or advantages, like the play judge would kind of understand that. So you wouldn't have to spend as much time, but you wouldn't go full like regular pro debate, like <laughs> full on like reading fast, all that with play judge because they still might need a little bit more adjusting to understanding the argument. And then we have a pro judge. This is the um, ideal type of judge you would want because you don't really have to adjust your debate style accordingly. You can read fast. Um, they're usually a current debater, a college debater, um, a pro debater, or a debate coach. Um, some of the coaches, um, full disclosure, are either lay judges or play judges because a lot of them um, haven't debated before. So just because you get a high school coach doesn't mean that they are a pro judge. <laughs> you know, that's not always the case is within bottles so usually like a current college debater or like a pro debater um and the way you find out what type of debater you have is by asking them <laughs> so usually like before the round starts you'll get a judge they'll be like do you have any questions you can be like yes can you tell us a little bit about your debate experience and then if they tell you about their debate experience you'll adjust your argument accordingly um, another way you can do this is through a paradigm and a paradigm is just a little paragraph that people that the judges put on tab room and explains their debate experience. I'll also show you that on tab room when we go through there. Um, so that's kind of how you figure out what type of judge you have. Um, does anyone have any questions about that? All right, cool. Um, sorry if I am talking really fast or speeding through it. Um, let me know if I need to slow down. Zamil is um, trying to get in. I'm sorry? Zamil is trying to um get back in. Oh, it must okay. have cut out or something. Cool. I'm going to have to go to the main chat to let her in really quick. Um, but if you have any questions about judges, please feel free to ask both. I'll be right back. So far, do we have any questions about the types of judges that Sakai just mentioned and what they might mean? When she said laying out your speech or something, does that just mean like simplifying it? Mm -hmm. Basically, okay. if you were trying to say something like that was, uh, I don't know, that included a bunch of debate jargon, like if you said words like permutation or um, you were just talking about like solvency and impact calculus, something that you would have need to have debate training to understand, then you will want to not do that if you had a lay judge and you will want to just try to say what the argument is without the debate part attached to it. So saying what the impact is or saying what the solvency is without explaining it using the debate word solvency, impact, whatever, because that person would not be familiar with it. Just like if you didn't know sports and somebody started using some very specific sport language to you, as I do, <laughs> that's why I just called them all sport, you know, like I wouldn't be able to engage in that conversation. You would just need to break it down to me more basic. Okay, thank you. All right, um, we're going to do a tab room. So we're, we're going to do a few different things and then I'll give you guys the last 20 minutes to prep. I hope that's enough time. 
Um, so we'll go into 510 to kind of like go over tab room, pairing, all that, and then we'll move on to breakout rooms. Okay. And also as a thing, if your debate partner is here, please type their name in the chat so I can add you guys to the breakout rooms when it's time. So we are going to go over the tournament schedule really quick. So let me exit. I had it right there. Um, let me stop sharing screen for a second so I can find that. All right, here we go. I'm sharing my screen again. Where is it? Sorry, I'm sharing my screen again now. Okay, so just as like a preliminary type thing, this is the tournament schedule. Uh, we will have registration at 9 a.m. So please make sure you are there, you are logged into the Zoom so we can make sure that you are present and we mark you as so. So that way we can assign you to a debate round. At 10 o'clock is when our first debate round starts. Um, for all divisions, usually in like past years pre-COVID, um, <laughs> Novices would have a workshop and then varsity and JV would then have their round one and then the round one for novices wouldn't start till later, but we are on Zoom, so everybody's just starting their um, round one at the same time at 10 o'clock. We will have lunch at 12. We will have round two at one o'clock, round three at three. And then we will have the award ceremony at 6.30 via Zoom. And so we'll just come back to the main Zoom chat. And the way the um, award ceremony works is we will let you guys know the ranking of like we won't tell you your score per se but we'll just like give you like a ranking like which teams came in like first through ten um and then we'll do it for teams and speaker points so that's the tournament schedule and we will go into anyone have any questions about the tournament schedule yeah i do mm -hmm. yeah. so um either miss whitaker or you you like send us a zoom link and then we'll join the zoom link and then from there We'll go onto our tab room account and then click that link on there and then go into our tournament or like. No, so it would be a little different. So we are all starting on the same Zoom link for the um, registration form. Okay. And that should be on the master link schedule. Let me see. Um, is it practice? Yeah, here it is. So if everybody has access to the master link schedule, It'll say season opener tournament, this link right here. You'll press that, and it'll take us all to a big Zoom room. And that Zoom room is our registration slash anything comes up room. So that'll be your default room. So if you cannot access your, um, oh my God, a huge wasp just flew into my room. Okay. <laughs> so if you have any trouble accessing your round or Right okay, if you have any trouble accessing your round or um, any troubles with anything, you are going to come back to that Zoom link. Uh, yeah. And then, so we're all going to that Zoom link right there. And sorry, can you give me one second? Yeah. Um, okay, sorry. We don't want you to die by wasps, Sakai. Please handle that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think I got to move to the corner of my room, but I will have him rock in case I need to run. Um, so yeah, so that's so we are all going to meet on that link, and but you'll actually be physically debating on tab room, and this is tab room right here. If you guys remember this site, um, so we will all meet on Zoom from this link here. And then once we tell you guys that like pairings are released, you are then going to log into your tab room account, which is this thing here. And it will, oh my God. <laughs> um, sorry. It will then. Oh, because on my tab room, I can't see like All right, me I'm and my friend. From a wasp. Okay. Because on my tab room, I can't see like. Me and my partner. You don't, see, like, um, you don't see. Okay. 
Um, let me, I'll show you guys the entries. And if you do not see your name on here, which is really, really important, please let me know in the chat. Um, let me pull up policy really quick. Okay, so these are all the novice entries, which means these are all the students who are competing or are registered to compete this Saturday. So if you don't see your name here, uh, let me know because that's a problem. <laughs> and we will then enter you late after this practice. Hmm? My name's not there. Okay, yes, can you unput it in the chat for me, please? And Madison, do you have a partner? I don't think so. Okay, that's fine. So I think we have a few students like floating who don't have a partner either, so don't worry about that. Um, okay, yeah, so if you do not see your name right here, please text me, not text me, please put in the chat that you are not registered. And if you are, re are not registered and you have a partner, please add your partner too. Because this I also is have another important. question. Yeah. Should I wait or exit now? Um, you can just exit now. Okay, I have two. My first one is when we, um, on tab room, I know that we um, meet up on one Zoom, but on tab room to actually compete on our tournament and like go against other team, will there be like a link on our tab room to press? That's yeah. like what I'm confused about. No, yeah. So um, you will be receiving your pairings. You'll receive an email from tab room on like once pairings are released and that email will have a link and that link will then take you oh. to your debate round. And oh, okay. if you can't actually, yeah. So fine, you're good. So um, you'll get it from the email, and if you can't access the round from your email, log into your tab room account. Well, you should be logged in already, but then just go to your account like that, and then it'll have something pairing up being like your team code versus this, and then it'll have like a little box with a little camera on it, and you'll click on that box with the camera, and that'll take you to your round. Oh, okay. Quick question. Oh, sorry. Do you have a second mm -hmm. question? Never mind. Oh, yeah, um, second question. Yeah, oh, sorry. My, my second question is really quick. I'm so sorry. But my oh, second yeah. question is, where can I find, like, the master link? Is it, like, on, like, Slack or something? Because... Yeah, it should be on Slack, but I will share it again in the chat for you guys, and you guys should save that. So let me copy it for you. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Yeah, I just posted the master link document. Let me show you. Yep, okay. Posted in the chat. How long so. are we totally going to be on Zoom for for the tournament? Um, expect to be there the full day. Um, oh so, okay, so for the Zoom, yes, it's a it's a whole tournament. Tournament is usually all day. So here's the times when you will be physically debating between ten and twelve, one and three, and then three to six. Those are the times you will be. It won't be physically Zoom, but you will be debating on another video platform, which is what Tabroom has. Mm -hmm. But if you have any problems accessing your round or your judge doesn't show up or you can't find your partner or whatever, log into the main Zoom chat, this link here, because me and Waleen will also be there and we will then help you guys like, fix any problems you have. So this is in case you have any issues, the default is the Zoom link. And then oh, you'll be debating physically on tab room. How long is each person going for during the debate? Is it like five minutes, five minutes, five minutes? Is it like longer, 30, 30, like how long are we debating? No, it's a little, okay, that's actually what I also wanted to have time for. We went over this in the beginning of the season, but for people who joined us a little later, let me pull up the original. We'll just go over it really quick. Because we also have, okay, so. We have seven minutes, so we'll do that too. But before we get into that, does anyone have any last questions about Tavern? All right, cool. All right, cool. Um, if you have any questions, just feel free to mute yourself, let me know. Um, but if you, again, if you do not see your name here, please let me know, because if you are not registered, you will not be debating on Saturday. So let me know. Even if you don't have a partner, if you still want to participate, let me know in the chat and I'll check that when we break out into breakout rooms. All right, so I think that's it for tab room. Let me make sure that's what we want. Okay, so, oh, how a ballot works. I'll do that really quick too. So again, you are scored on speaker points and who wins the round. So I don't know if I have access to any of my old ballots. Let me see. Do I know? Okay, I'm trying to see if I had any old ballots from when I was in high school. 
the IV one. Okay, whatever. So <laughs> on ballots, it'll usually tell you who wins the round, and it'll either tell you A or night. And it'll also give you speaker points and a ranking. So the speaker points is out of 30, and it tells you how well of a speaker you were in that round. And then the number right next to it will tell you how you ranked out of the other students in that round. So if it gives you a 29-1, that means 29 is the points you got out of 30, and one is like you were the top speaker of that round. Or if you get like a 28-4, that means your score is a 28, and you were the fourth speaker of that round. Does that make sense? All right, I'm gonna go briefly into the introduction slides for people who are to join it maybe a little later, or just, this is just a good refresher for everyone on how many, like how long speeches are, all that. So again, constructives are eight minute speeches. Everybody will be giving a constructive, a cross sex and rebuttal. So you will be speaking for eight minutes, three minutes and five minutes. That's how much you guys will be speaking and you will alternate with your partner and the other team. So everybody will be delivering an eight minute constructive, a three minute cross ex and a five minute rebuttal. Matt, does someone have a question? Yeah. Two hours. I'm sorry? Does that take up like the full two hours that we're debating for? It'll take up most likely, in, I would say about a good debate round that like has no interruptions or anything would last maybe like an hour and a half. And that's like would judge you back. But, um, since it's on Zoom, there might be interruptions, so plan to be available for that full two hours. All right, so here's the layout again. And also, make sure you refer back to your evidence packet, because the evidence packet has this laid out. So if you're in a round and you forget like which speech you guys are on or what comes after the next speech, refer back to your evidence packet, because that's a good resource. I'll also pull it up and put it in the chat for you guys, in case anyone doesn't have access to it. Um, any questions? Great, still on time. So again, basic question, how many debaters in a round? Traditionally, there's four debaters, you, your partner, and then the other team and their partner. There are exceptions of Mavericks, which are means that they're debating by themselves because their partners aren't available, they just don't have one. And then it'll be like three people in a round, but traditionally there are four people in a round. Who decides who win? The judge decides who wins. Can you debate by yourself? Yes, you can, but we prefer you have a partner. Um, do people watch my rounds? Unfortunately, not on Zoom because there is no way for them to physically view it. Um, and what do you do in a round? You debate. Okay, so here's a quick um, also refresher for the evidence packet. When you are reading cards, you start with the tagline and the tagline is the thing in bold before you get to the author's name and date. So the tagline right here is nuclear terror is in a year, they have the means and motivation. And then it says, I, ISIL has enough money, new weapons from Pakistan, smuggle the Mexican border, more possible today than ever. That whole thing is our tagline. And then the author's date and the, sorry, the author's name and date are the citations. So you start with the tagline and then you go to citations and then you read the underlying portion. Any can questions? you give, like, can you read that? like as if you were reading it in evidence because i'm still a little confused on that um what do you mean as an evidence like do you mean like reading it can you read it as if you were debating and this was one of your cards yeah no this is a card yeah so this whole thing is a card and a card has a tagline a author's date uh, means sorry, author's name and date that's part of your card but if you're referring to like the style in which you say it, I would slow down and make it really clear to the judge that this is a tagline. So if I were reading it like as if I was debating it around, I would slow down to the tagline. I would be like, nuclear terror is in a year. They have the means and motivation, press TV 2015. And then when I would read the evidence, I would speed up a little bit more. So I'd be like, the ISIL terror group claims that they have enough money to buy nuclear weapons from Pakistan. Like you see how that's faster than the tagline? Yeah, I was just, I'm just confused because, um, like, my school team at Tech, like, they only said that we had to read, like, the author and the date, so that's why I was just confused. Oh, yeah, there, there might have been a miscommunication, but 
you have to have a tagline because if you don't have a tagline, then it's like you're just reading evidence with no the tagline explains like what you're arguing and why you are reading that card. So if you don't have a tagline, it's just like you're just reading evidence with no direction. So yes, um, regardless of what you were taught at your individual school practices, taglines are necessary. You will not win around without a tagline. Um, so make sure you read your tagline, which is the bold. So you would just read it and then start reading the highlighted part? You would yes. read the tagline and, okay. So you would read tagline, which is the bold before um, you get into the author's name. So tagline, author's last name, date, and then the evidence. Let me also pull up our evidence back so you can see that. And like in real life. Let me stop sharing, so I don't know where that is. <laughs> Let me pull the evidence back really quick. Um, this is the last thing and then we will break off into breakout rooms. I want you guys to have enough time to talk to your partner in case you were unable to get that time um, in your individual school practices. So here's the bottle evidence packet again. And if I, okay, some really things to keep in uh, mind when you have the packet is that this thing right here is a really good resource for when you forget or like if you're unsure of the order of a debate round. So this right here gives you the time gives you the purpose for each speech and gives you the order. So as you can see, the 1AC is the first speech, it's eight minutes long, and this is to present the affirmative case. And then you just keep going down there. So if you're in a round and say you're at the the one, the two A two NC, sorry, and you're like, I don't know which speech to go next, go back to this file really quick or have it pulled up in a different tab and then refer to it and be like, oh, the next thing that's gonna happen is the cross sex and that's the three minutes. So just keep that in mind. Any questions? Um, Sakai, I know you mentioned we're about to go into breakout rooms, but mm -hmm. my partner Kennedy, she left early, so what should I do? Um, for people who don't have partners, I'll keep you guys in the main chat and we can do like a Q&A slash I'll help you guys prep. Okay. Cool. Um, any other questions? Are you able to put the link of what we're looking at right now into the chat so you can access? Yes. I will do that. Um, and also, if anyone does not have access to the Slack, let me know and I will send you an invitation as well. And that'll also be really helpful for like when we're at the tournament and you're like, you can't communicate or you're like, you're unable to get in communication with anyone. The Slack is a really good resource. So make sure you're also added on the Slack as well. And I will send the evidence packet to the chat. Can you guys go? Um, I will also send you another resource for students who are unable to come to the workshop. I believe it was the week before last week. We created a like a rough document for 1AC and 2AC. So I will also put that in the doc because that will definitely help you guys when you guys are prepping. All right, any last questions, comments, concerns? All right, cool. Oh, sorry, someone have one? All right, um, I will stop up there. I will also be right back to you because someone needs to be led into the main chat as well. So I will do that. I will also send the link to the 1AC and, two, and 1NC. So you guys, you and your partner can look over that. It's a little starter. Edit it, feel free to do whatever you want with that. And I will also make you guys off into breakout rooms if your partner is here. All right, um, and then Brooke will also be here to answer, answer any questions. So feel free to answer, I mean, sorry, feel free to ask any questions. Okay, so I'm going to put into the chat the link to the 1AC and 2AC from the workshop. And this is just a rough draft. Make sure you make a copy of this because I don't, you guys aren't able to edit it. So make a copy, feel free to edit, um, add any cards you want, practice it. This is just a starter kit for you guys. Um, so it gives you guys a little bit of direction on how 1AC and 1NC should look like. I am now going to send you guys into your breakout room. So whenever you have that, just free, feel free to just go in there. If you have any questions, feel free to join this room too. All right, cool. So I'm now going to create the breakout room. All right, um, if you guys have any other questions, let me know. If not, um, we only have four minutes until it's over, so you guys are free to go. 
Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And obviously, it's the other people in the breakout room to come back. Bye, everyone. Okay, thank you. Bye.